Okay, so we, we left off talking about uh, Avogadro's number and how moles and mass are related and how moles helps us to understand like the actual particles, the micro particles that actually make up matter and make up a substance. Um, and, and based on this, we can actually move into another topic, <laughs> which is, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> molar mass, right? That's gonna, that's where we're gonna start today, talking about molar mass and how it connects to uh, atomic mass units. And that way we're gonna, and we're also from that gonna develop a new unit, which is the unit for molar mass, which is grams per mole. Because up to this point, everything has been, been in uh, atomic mass units, right? So when we talk about the mole, if a, whatever the element is that we're talking about, if this one mole is gonna contain the same number of atoms as any other element that's present in one mole. So it's always gonna be Avogadro's number of atoms in one mole of any given element. All right, so let's, let's connect mass and moles using the concept of molar mass. So this is the 24. All right, so we're gonna connect uh, molar mass. We're gonna start talking about molar mass which is again, the connection between mass and moles, right? So molar mass has a units of grams per one mole of substance, right? So you'll see this illustrated or, or depicted as grams per mole, right? So you can, you can, express formula weight, which we've been talking about. We talked about how to calculate molecular weight, formula weight. You can express this in uh, grams per mole. So formula weight can be expressed in either grams per mole or AMU. But the thing about expressing it in AMU, atomic mass units, is you can't get any information from that about how many moles of a substance uh, exist in a specific mass of a substance. You, you can't tell that from AMU, right? But you can tell it from grams per mole. So this is a very important uh, unit to understand, right? And the reason you can hop between AMU and grams per mole is that if, if you recall the definition of AMU, right, is based on a carbon-12 isotope. Right, that's the basis for uh, atomic mass units. Right, so the <clears throat> definition of a mole is also based on a carbon-12 isotope. Right, so we define a mole as um, one, 12 grams of carbon-12 isotope uh, contains exactly one mole of carbon-12 atoms. So that's how, we, that's how we describe the mole. It is, so one, one mole of carbon-12 isotope is in 12 grams of a carbon-12 isotope, right? And so we can apply that to any atom. And so that's how we're able to, to uh, kind of go back and forth between atomic mass units and molar mass, which is grams per mole. Different scale, but they're equivalent. Atomic mass units is dealing with individual atoms and the, the uh, molar mass is dealing with the mass of an atom, mass of atoms per mole of a given substance, right? But they are equivalent. So we can go back and forth between them. So now you're gonna see me use this grams per mole as a common unit for molar mass, All right? So anytime we wanna calculate molar mass or anytime we have molar mass, there are three things that we can always get to, all right? If we have any two of these um, items, so 
the molar mass. Uh oh, sorry about that. The molar mass is grams per mole. And we can manipulate this based on what we need. It doesn't matter what two units we have, we can manipulate this uh, and find the other unit. You're gonna find out. <laughs> That's one of the, really the hallmarks of doing chemistry is being able to uh, interconvert between units. If you have one unit and you have what you need to convert to another unit, then you know, you're gonna see a lot of times where you can just substitute one thing in for another based on the units. But anytime we have the molar mass is measured in grams, grams per mole. So this is molar mass. If we wanted to find a number of grams, then we would say molar mass times moles is grams, All right? If we wanted to find a number of moles, we could say grams over molar mass is moles. So we can manipulate this simple unit or this simple equation and find any, any one of these three pieces of data, just depending on what we already have. All right. So let's look at some examples. So we have, uh, let's say we have 4.7 grams of potassium, right? And we want to know how many moles of potassium that is. We can just simply use the atomic mass for potassium because that's given in AMU. We could also write it in grams per mole. So the atomic mass for potassium remember A is the symbol for atomic mass. So we're going to use The atomic mass for potassium, which is 39.10 AMU or 39.10 grams per mole, right? Same thing. So we can write it. We can write either one of those like that. So this is AMU, this is grams per mole, all right? So now what we, what we need to do is manipulate the equation. So we have molar mass right we also have a mass right so grams which is the mass over molar mass will give us moles so we take 4.7 second Right. We, if we remember this, if we just remember grams per mole equals molar mass, we can manipulate that equation, right? So now all we do is take that 4.7 grams, keep the units in, divided by 39.10 grams per mole, right? If we keep, if we use those, this calculation is going to get us to moles of potassium, right? Can somebody calculate that real quick? I got 0 0.12 moles. 0 0.12 moles. All right, good. All right. So that's a calculation that's indispensable to you as a chemistry student. You have to be able to do this calculation like really at the drop of a hat because you're going to be converting, especially when we get further along, start talking about uh, limiting reagent and balancing equations and all that stuff. This is indispensable. You have to be able to uh, manipulate this simple equation. 
with molar mass, grams, and moles. All right. Um, let's do another example. Let's say we have a, uh, so we'll call this an example A. We'll put here what this is. So when you go, if you go back and look at the notes. All right, let's take another example. Let's say we have one liter of argon gas. And it contains 9.2 times 10 to the minus four moles. We can say, now we can ask the question, how many grams? Right. There's a that, and, and have it, let me ask you this: If we have a volume in liters, and we have the density of the gas, can we calculate grams from that? I'm just asking that because this this is a kind. It kind of points to something we already talked about: the density, how we can convert between density and uh, mass and volume. Mama. It would be yes, just because density equals mass over volume. Mass, yeah. Mass. Yeah. So if you got the volume and the density, you can you can solve for the mass. Very good. But here we're gonna use we're not using that. I'm, it just hit me because we have a volume of a gas, and uh, we could have a we could actually calculate the density once we find the mass. Actually, let's do that. But let's find the mass first. So how many grams is this? So you have argon gas. If you look on the periodic table, argon has an atomic mass of 63.55. All right, so that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna take that. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong. I'm looking at the another example. Uh, argon has an atomic mass of 39.95, my bad. I got my examples kind of Y'all know my hand, right? They kind of smushed together in my notes. <laughs> Sorry about that. 39.95 grams per mole. So how are we going to calculate this? We have moles and molar mass, right? So moles times molar mass equal what? Grams. Isn't that what we have up top? Right? And, and these three manipulations right here are lifesavers. You need to commit them to memory. Molar mass is grams per mole. Molar mass times moles equals grams. Grams over molar mass equals moles. Because mm -hmm. you can work and manipulate through any of these type of calculations if you know that Mol molar mass is grams per mole. All right, so all we, all we need to do now is plug numbers in. So we got 9.2, 9.2 times 10 to the minus four moles times the molar mass of argon gas, which is 39.95 grams per mole. So the moles are gonna cancel. We'll be left with grams. Anybody got it? Thirty-nine point nine five times point zero 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 nine two. Let me break out my calculator. All right, I need to go and get me a. I had a TI thirty, I think I have from, since college. I don't know where it where it is. I think it's in storage somewhere. Anybody got that calculation yet? I got zero point. Zero three six seven five four. Let's say so. Let's and the way we could check that you always can put that and divide it by the moles to get the to make sure it matches. 
comes in 0 0.02 two times 39.95. Yes, Point, we'll just round it up to 0 0.037 grams. Good. All right, uh, let's do one more. Um, let's do. one more so let's take uh because this is going to lead us into another um another topic um no actually let's do two more let's do two more so let's say we have a uh, five grams of copper wire so this would be example b let's see and i'm just trying to lay the groundwork so when you see this You'll know, you'll understand that you can see it more than one way. You don't want to box yourself in to thinking that you're only going to see one type of problem, one type of format. All right, so let's say I have five grams of copper wire. And the question is, how many uh, atoms how many atoms are in five grams of copper wire? All right, this, this is going to require a multi-step calculation. All right, so how many atoms? So what's the first thing we need to do? We can't go straight from grams to atoms, can we? All right, there's no direct calculation to go from grams to atoms. But you can go from grams to moles to atoms. To go from grams to moles, you need the molar mass. All right, you need molar mass, and then we go from moles to atoms, you need Avogadro's number. All right, so this is going to be a two-step calculation, but it's still going to involve converting mm -hmm. grams to moles using the molar mass. So somebody tell me what the uh, molar mass of copper is. So we got five grams of copper. Remember, it's... Uh, grams over molar mass equals moles, right? So five grams of copper divided by, what's the atomic mass of copper? Based on the periodic table. 63.546. Okay, so we're gonna round that up, 63.55. That's an AMU, but, but remember, since AMU is also based on a carbon-12 isotope, we can just say that this is also, we can write it as grams per mole, right? So can we get that five divided by 63.55? Anybody got that? And we're gonna do a couple of more examples like this, and then we're gonna move on to uh, uh, percent composition. Anybody got that? Um, I got zero point zero seven nine. I just ran. Yeah, zero point zero seven nine. Yes. Okay, that's what we got. We're gonna we're gonna roll with that. Now we need to take those moles. Let me shrink some of this down so I can make some room. We need to take those moles. I always remember this little manipulation here. Grams over molar mass will give you moles. You got any of those two, any two of those three values, you can find the third one. All right, so we're gonna, now we have moles. So now in order to go from moles to atoms, we need Avogadro's number, right? So this is grams 
moles now we're going from moles to atoms what is Avogadro's number again anybody Six point zero two two times ten to the twenty third. Okay, what's the unit? Uh, particles per mole. Right. So that top number, we that discrete particle in the top, we can make it whatever we want it to be. In this case, we want it to be atoms. So we're going to say atoms per mole. Right. So that moles would cancel, and then we'll we'll be left with atoms. All right. Any questions about that? That's my exponent key. All right, can somebody calculate that real quick? Anybody got it? I'm not sure if I put it because I don't have a, a calculator. So I'm using my phone. I'm not sure I put it in the phone right though. I'm gonna make sure that uh, it's the right number before I put it on the paper, on the screen, not the paper. <laughs> I got 4.74 times 10 to the 22nd. 22nd atoms, okay. All right, that sounds right. All right. Uh, any questions about that calculation, right? So this is a, a, type, a type of question you can expect to see on a quiz or a test. If I give you grams, and now we know how to manipulate between grams and molar mass and moles, we also know how to manipulate between moles and particles per mole using Avogadro's number. So you get, if you have a number of grams, I might ask you for the number of atoms or the number of molecules. Uh, and so forth. So let's look at one more example of this. And um, we're gonna we're gonna actually say that question there. We're gonna actually look at this question right here. So we have um, we're gonna actually derive the number of atoms in a sample by mass. So let's look at that. So we got a forty milligram sample. All right, so this is similar to the question we just did, but it's a little bit more in depth. So I'm gonna derive, and this is example, what is that? Let's see. Yeah, this would be example D. All right, we got a 40 milligram sample of saccharin. Sweet and low. Uh, that's, that's what saccharin is. It's actually horrible for you. Hopefully none of you eat that. <laughs> It was the it was a big deal when it first hit, but then the more the more it was studied, the more people scientists realized that it was terrible for you. Uh, so saccharin has a molecular formula of C seven H five N O three S. Right. You don't have to write this part down, but it looks like this. This is the structure for it. It's a sulfur here. Put two double bonds to it. All right. So the question is in a 40 milligram sample, how many molecules of saccharin are there?
right? So again, we have the mass, 40 milligrams. We have the molecular formula. What can we do with that? If we have carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, and we have the amounts of each one, can we calculate the uh, molar mass based on that? We can calculate it. All right, this is carbon. This is hydrogen. Uh, this is nitrogen, oxygen, and then sulfur. All right, if you cal if you calculate that, it, you should get one eighty three point one eight. And this is going to be in grams per mole. So we know the molar mass. Now that we have the molar mass, what can we do if we have a, a mass and a molar mass? What can we do? Divide them and get the moles. Divide them and get the moles. Excellent. Uh, but our mass is in milligrams. So we need to do a unit conversion first because the milligrams will not cancel out with grams in, in the molar mass. So we need to convert 40 milligrams into grams. So all the stuff that we learned in the first chapter is now all coming back, not to haunt us, but to visit us. Right, that prefix milligram, that means that's one thousandth of a gram. So 40 milligrams, and then the conversion is uh, one gram over 1,000 milligrams. So milligrams on cancel. So that's going to end up being 0 0.04. So that, you'll be surprised. How these this simple unit conversion could be the difference in getting a problem right or wrong, understanding like the units that you're working with. As long as I've been teaching chemistry, this is something that trips students up all the time, right? You have milligrams, but you need it in grams. And sometimes in the process of working the problem, you don't think about it. You just do it. And then you come up with an answer. It's like it's off. You might have it's going to be the right number but it's not going to be, the decimal place is not going to be in the right place. All right. So now we have our molar mass here. All right. So now that's just going to be grams over molar mass. To give me moles. Because once I get the moles, I can calculate the molecules using Avogadro's number. All right, so that's now going to be 0 0.040 grams divided by 183. Come on, Russell. One, one day I'm going to get fancy and sophisticated and use a stylus, but I, I doubt it. 183.18 grams per mole. All right. Can somebody hit that real quick, that calculation? Right, again, it's, it's important while, while you're doing the calculation, it's very important to pay attention to details. That, that milligram could be the difference in you getting the right answer and you pulling all your hair out trying to figure out why it's not adding up. Uh, Anybody got it yet? Um, I got zero point zero 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 
218. Okay. So I agree. That's the same thing I just calculated point zero 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 two two. We'll call it that. And that's in that's in moles. Right? So now we know the number of moles and Now we can find the number of molecules, right? So we can take that with 0 0.00022 times Avogadro's number. Molecules per mole, right? Whatever, what that discrete particle in the top can be whatever you need it to be, as long as you're converting from moles, right? You're starting with a number with moles as the unit. All right, so moles here are gonna cancel. What do we, what do we have from that? A lot, that's a lot of uh, calculating, but you can do it. I got 1.315 times 10 to the 20th. Okay, so let me see. 1.315 times 10 to the 20th molecules. All right, I agree with that. All right, now, but the question, if we go back to the question, it asks uh, how many molecules, but there's a second part to the question that I didn't write up there. Now we can ask how many, how many atoms per molecule. Right. And that's a simple calculation. Uh, we can just take the uh, formula from the top. Let me not say how many atoms. How many carbon atoms per molecule, All right? So we can take that formula from the top. There are seven carbons in every molecule of saccharin. So we can say seven. times this number of molecules that we just found. All right, and then of course molecules are gonna cancel and you'll be left with carbon atoms. All right, you don't have, we don't have to do that calculation, but I'm just showing you like with, just with this problem alone, we have done, a molar mass calculation where we had to find the molar mass based on the formula. We've done a conversion from grams to uh, milligrams. Sorry about that. Hit the wrong button. We've done a conversion from grams to milligrams. Uh, we have done a conversion from uh, milligrams to grams. We've done a conversion from grams to moles, moles to molecules, and molecules to atoms, all in one problem. But it, everything is predicated on understanding the relationship between mass and moles. And once you understand that, these calculations, although it's a lot, it looks like a lot, it's really just manipulating between grams, moles, and molar mass, right? With one other additional uh, calculation being, you know, going from moles to discrete particles, like molecules, atoms, ions, so on and so forth. All right, any questions about anything we talked about up to this point? I got a question for the last question we just yeah, did. Sure, go ahead. So did we just find like the total amount of carbon atoms or did we just find 
the carbon atoms per uh, molecule. Yeah, so we, we found, so we, we know that it's 1.315 times 10 to the 20th molecules of saccharin in 40 milligrams. And then in that 40 milligrams, there are seven times 1.315 times 10 to the 20th carbon atoms. Because there's seven carbons in every molecule based on the formula. That's what the molecular formula means that every one molecule has this composition of elements or atoms. All right, did okay. they answer it? Yes, sir. Okay, all right, good. That's a great question. And, and again, what, what we're able to see is macro to micro. We start out with 40 milligrams, but we can, there, there are calculations that we can do to figure out how many atoms are present, how many molecules are present, how many moles are present. And that's on the micro level. So the mole and the atomic, uh, atomic number and molar mass those things allow us to manipulate and uh, really traverse between all of these different units, between mass and moles and atoms and molecules. Uh, if, we, if we know any two of those values, we can calculate the third. And that's really an important thing to think to keep in mind as we move through this. Uh, and it doesn't matter what kind of problem you're doing, you have to have a certain amount of information in order to carry that problem out. If the information is incomplete, then you either have to find the, the information or you can't do it that particular way. You got to find another way to do the problem. All right. So again, not only am I trying to help you with the chemistry part, but also developing the, the problem solving skill set, looking for what I have and then using what I have to find what I want. Because there's always a conversion. There's always some way to get from point A to point B. There's some conversion in the middle that we can use to get from A to B, just like we went from grams to moles or moles to grams or uh, molar mass times moles will give us grams, right? There's always a conversion, right? If, if there are no other uh, questions, we're going to take the, take the next five minutes or so, and we're going to discuss... Uh, on the next page. Uh, we're going to also uh, begin discussing the topic of uh, empirical formulas, right? That's the next section in chapter three. So the first section dealt with uh, atomic mass and formula weight and Avogadro's number and moles. And in this section, we're going to uh, be dealing with empirical formulas. Right. And this is, again, this, this section is going to be calculation heavy, uh, but we can do it. I, I, I believe in you. I know you're able to do it. All right, so it's, it's a calculation heavy section. But what you'll find with these empirical formula problems is that really you're really working from two basic concepts. You're working from uh, how many moles are present and what ratio of what's the mole to mole ratio of atoms in a formula. That's it. Right. You're going you're gonna to see that as we work through the examples, that is really finding the number of moles of each atom and then finding the ratio of the atoms to each other to figure out what the formula is. Right. And if you remember from a couple of weeks ago, we talked about empirical formula, really last week, right before the exam, we talked about empirical versus molecular formulas and how um, empirical formula is like the reduced form of uh, a molecular formula. So it just basically tells you the relative amounts of mm -hmm. atoms that are present. Uh, but un under this topic, we're going to talk, we're going to do uh, three things. We're going to do percent composition. All right, we're going to do, uh, we're going to abbreviate that empirical formulas then molecular formulas, right? We can find the molecular formula based on the empirical formula. And a lot of these, we're gonna be converting between mass 
and then uh, mass and moles and then moles and mole to mole ratio. That's really going to be a, a really uh, key part of this section. All right. So the, how do we connect this to what we were just looking at with, you know, moles and molar mass and Avogadro's number? The connection is that we're dealing with uh, bulk mass, right? It's always, always going to come down to bulk mass of a, of a substance. So the bulk mass, and then from the bulk mass, we can figure out the number of atoms or molecules or moles, right? And we can also do, the, do all of these conversions, converting grams into moles and so on and so forth. But if we don't know a particular formula, then we can derive it. So the molecular formula, or even the empirical formula, can be derived if we don't know All right, so we can derive the molecular formula or the empirical formula if it's unknown but in order to do that we need the masses of the atoms that are present so that's where percent composition comes in All right, so the percent composition allows us to find the masses of the elements present in a molecule in a specific, and they're going to be there in a specific ratio, right? So it's the percent by mass of each element. The percent by mass of each element. All right, and so this is a percent composition in its rawest form is the most basic of all of these calculations. Um, you can you can find percent composition from by mass. You can find it from the molecular formula. You can find it from the empirical formula. It just depends on what information is given. All right, so we're going to look at a bunch of different examples of this. Uh, uh, dealing with this percent composition. So let's let's look at in the last three minutes, let's just do a very a very basic example uh, given the masses of specific of specific elements in a compound or molecule and figuring out what the percentages are. All right, so we're going to first look at percent. This is the most basic out of all of the calculations. Not about basic. Come on, Russell. All right, this is one way to calculate it. All right, so let's say we have a 12 gram, 12.04 uh, gram sample of a liquid. All right, and in that sample, there's 7.34 grams of carbon. There's one, 1 1.85 grams of hydrogen, and there's 2.85 grams of nitrogen. So these are my elements. These are the masses. The percent composition is the mass of the element divided by the total mass. times 100, right? It's that simple, right? So the total mass here is 12.04 grams. That's the total sample mass. Let me put sample mass, not because it's not the atomic mass, it's different from that. So the total sample mass times 100. So if I wanted to know how the percent composition of uh, carbon, how much carbon is in that sample by percentage, then I would just take 
7.34 grams of carbon divided by 12.04 grams of sample times 100, right? And it's really just grams and grams, so the grams are going to cancel uh, because the element is not a part of the unit. It's just describing what which element we're talking about. So grams will cancel here. Same thing with hydrogen, It'd be one point. 85 grams divided by 12.04 grams times 100. And then the same thing with nitrogen. What was it? 2.8 there, 2.85. 2.85 grams divided by 12.04 grams times 100. All right. And this is a this calculation. will give us what we call the percent composition. So we'll know the exact percentages of each element that's present <clears throat> in the um, in that molecule. All right. So we got we're going to stop here. I don't want to go too far over time, um, but we'll pick this up on. All right. All right. Any questions before we go? Let me look at. I see chat stuff in the chat, but I didn't cause his name. All right. Cool. All right. Any questions? All right, if no questions, we're gonna stop here. Let me stop recording. And um, I wanna encourage you to just keep pushing because